Hello YouTube. Today's video is going to be a server extravaganza video where we're going to take a look at uh, two servers that you see here. On the left we have the microserver generation 10 which we will not be touching because that's been running fine and that's still running fine right now. We don't need to do anything to it. But these other two here, first of which is new, on the left here is an HP ML150 generation 6 and on the right is the trusty yet very dark DL380 Generation 7. I've been wanting to replace the Generation 7 DL380 because it was unpractical, but uh, that I have the ML150, I'm like, well, <laughs> the ML is not as expendable, so I decided to keep the DL380 anyway and keep the ML160 around as well, uh, albeit for some more dedicated tasks. It's a bit more power efficient, actually a lot more power efficient than the DL is. So I can transfer some tasks from the micro server that it can't really handle that well over to the ML. And if I need to do the heavy lifting, I can then uh, use the DL380, no problem. So we're going to do a bit of a switch around on the uh, RAM configuration of the ML and the DL. And uh, we're going to be upgrading, or at least finishing the upgrade, for the ML150 to support serial attached SCSI or SAS drives. Uh, by default this machine did not come with a SAS cage. I ordered that off uh, eBay. In fact, let's take a look at the front of the machine. Like so. It's basically just a uh, little door there. I already installed the SAS cage as you can see. The cage below that is SATA so we can use them side by side. Uh, you might wonder, well, uh, SAS can talk to SATA natively, right? And yeah, that's absolutely true, but of course we only have four bays, and I want to use those four bays for dedicated SAS storage. And if I wanted to add another drive, I can just add SATA drives in the bottom. In fact, I could even add another SAS cage down there and use another four SAS drives on my controller. That's not a problem either, but uh, I'm not going to do that. That's a bit much. Uh, sadly, I could only find the uh, large form factor drive cage for 3.5 inch drives. I wanted to use the 2.5 inch drive cage, but no such luck, because I got another 8 uh, small form factor drives, and I can't really use them in this machine. But oh well, I do have some large form factor drives, I just need some more caddies to uh, fully populate all 4 slots for a RAID 10 configuration. But that's all beside the point. Let's get the uh, ML150 out and let's finish the SAS upgrade and take a look at the RAM configuration. Right, so here are the insides of the machine. On the top right we have the power supply, which in this case is a non-removable unit. You can upgrade this to a uh, configuration with two hot swap PSUs. I really don't want to because there's no need. <laughs> it's just going to cost a lot of money. Here in the bottom we have the first socket, which is populated with the Xeon E5540, which is 2.5 GHz quad-core with hyper-threading. Second socket is empty, I don't have a CPU or a CPU cooler for that. I might upgrade that in the future, I don't know, <laughs> maybe. And the current RAM configuration down there, let me get you just a little bit closer here. I don't know if you can see that very well, but there are four sticks in down there. There are four 16 gb sticks for a total of 64 gigs. HP says you can only put 48 gigs in here with all 12 slots populated. Well, I just figured out that that was baloney, so that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, we got a pretty good amount of uh, expandability. We have a PCI slot, we have three PCI X8 slots, of which one is actually X4, and an X16, which is uh, pretty cool. So yeah, dual socket with 12 slots of RAM. That's pretty nice. But yeah, obviously we can only use one uh, socket, so only six slots for our triple channel configuration. I will downgrade this machine from 64 gigs to something else because I will need to use most of the memory for the DL380 because that needs to do the heavy lifting. And uh, I've got a lot of mix match RAM, so we'll see what we can uh, figure out on both of these. <laughs> Should be fun. So what we need first, uh, aside from the SAS drive cage, which you can see the back plane of right here, uh, we need to connect a mini SAS cable, which uh, connects to this port here, and we need to connect a signal cable down there. Now I've got both of those. Uh, this is the little uh, signal cable that will signal between the back plane and the motherboard of the server. 
So that's very important. If you don't have that, it won't work. And obviously, you also need a controller. This is an HP P410. I didn't pick this because this was an HP server. I just really know these cards very well. I had this in my Micro Server Generation 8. One of these things actually kicked a bucket in that, but no hard feelings. <laughs> Ordered this off eBay for 20 bucks, and uh, yeah, came in one piece, and it works. I already pre-tested all of this before I made this video, just to make sure. So we can just uh, install this like normal. I'll use this slot here. It is a little bit of a weird fit, this card. So, now we just need to push two blue tabs in the back of the server. So we can put this down. And then we'll need to be a little bit creative to make it uh, fit this card here. This is a little bit of a chore because apparently the bracket on this uh, controller is a little bit bent. But that seems uh, about right. So now we connect the mini SAS cable. Connector looks like that. Put it in like that. And then put it on the controller. And then we grab the signal cable. And connect it to one of the two uh, signal cable connecting points right here on the Vana board. Next to the 8 pin power connector. And that's it. That's all we need to do to get SAS running on this. It's also important to, of course, put back your fans. This ML server uses these modular fans. You can fit two of these here in the front. If you have two SAS drive cages, it's very much recommended to have a lot of airflow over the drives because they can run at like uh, between 7 and 15,000 RPM. And especially the higher RPM drives really need a lot of airflow over them. So there's that. So now we need to put this back. There are special mounting points on the bottom. It's just that you really have to work around all these little cables. It's a bit of a niggly job because it has to fit right on these little tabs here. Let's see, the layout is either for this configuration or this. And we're going to use this configuration for fan 2. Again, like I said, really fiddly. Sometimes you just have to push it down until it snaps into place. That's pretty good. Of course, we uh, should not forget to plug in the fan cable that comes with it, which I actually lost track of, which is right here. And the fan 2 connector is in the left corner of the motherboard. There we go. So now the SAS upgrade is done. Now we need to take a look at the RAM. Alright. So, here is the uh, stack of RAM. So in, in terms of what we've got right here to work with, these are all 16 gigabyte modules. We have six of those. For a total of 96 gigs. Which is very nice. That would max this server right out in terms of slots and probably capacity as well. And we have four 8 gigabyte sticks here. So in order to properly utilize the capacity of these servers, we'd have to think about the triple channel configuration, which means we have to populate uh, them in the right order. I figured out that that's probably the easiest to do in the DL because we have more slots in there, so we can mix and match a bit better. But at the same time, because it has dual CPUs, we need to install everything in even numbers. In this case, that's not really, or in the case of the ML, that's not the case. So, 
it is pretty <laughs> challenging. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we can't make them both run in triple channel because we have to run at least uh, six modules in the DL and at least three in this. I mean, we have ten sticks of RAM, but we also have to use match pairs and all that one. jazz. So what I've basically been thinking is either run the ML server, which is dual channel RAM. So we're going to run uh, these sticks, which means 32 gigs, uh, just in dual channel configuration. And then run the uh, DL380 with 96 gigs in, uh, well that's probably, no that's triple channel, yeah. We can run that in a triple channel configuration. So that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the 8 gig sticks. 40 ml. So let's actually do that. First, we have to figure out which is the first DIMM slot to populate. And it seems to be bottom up. So from the top of the server, basically the first slot from the server up is the first slot. We'll also figure out whether it even supports these sticks because I don't know. We'll also figure out whether this is even the right uh, order. The downside to this ML server is it doesn't actually have the configuration, I think, for the uh, for the memory. What you may or may not know is that most servers come with a plate that actually shows you how to populate everything. And uh, this one does, but it does not show how you should configure the RAM. So I'm just assuming that in this case it doesn't matter as much because otherwise they would have given us the information, right? So I guess that's the upgrade's done. That means we can close the book. And uh, take our test drive. There we go. Captive screws in the back. And now we can put it back on its feet, put the front cover on, and uh, yeah, be prepared, this thing is very loud. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I forget to put this uh, that big blue air deflector back in. <laughs> no, I didn't turn it on before, I just uh, figured out, whoops, forgot something. Same goes with the drives, I'll put it back together in a bit. But uh, yeah, we're going to be using these drives again, these are... Uh, Hitachi Ultra Stars, 7200 RPM, 600, well, it says 600 there, but these are two terabyte SAS drives. So, just 7200 RPM. I ordered two more caddies for this so we can run uh, four of these in a rate 10 configuration for four terabytes of fast storage. For our uh, VMware stuff, as usual. So yeah, alright. Let's fire the beast up. Again, wear ear protection, it's gonna get loud. Right, I decided to actually uh, not film the first 10 seconds where it's really at uh, takeoff levels. And there we go. This is not even full speed, this is maybe 50%. Just to give you an idea. <laughs> it's doing its uh, thermal calibration cycle right now. And uh, yeah, it takes a good while. And there we are. Ready to start the power on self test. Our smart array controller is detected. Alright. Physical drive position change detected. Whoops. Let's actually take a look. It's 
says the driver's okay. It's currently in a RAID 0, so it's totally safe. Uh, yeah, we can exit that utility. There we go. Uh, let's see... Shit. Uh, F10. There we go. Take a look at the BIOS here. It's really not all that different from a PC from this era. I mean, it says 2006, but the server's from about 2010. It's currently set to efficiency mode, so we don't get maximum uh, noise. Of course, I've enabled all the virtualization technologies that we can get. VTD for pass-through of hardware, which I might do, might not. Hybrid threading, obviously, very neat. Uh, C state technology is very important to uh, run in the lower power states. Uh, SATA controller is set to compatible. Well, I should have said that to A said that to AHCI. I didn't even realize that at first, because I'm using a SATA SSD, a 64 gig SAN disk of like five six years old, uh, as my boot drive. The server does support booting from a USB stick, but it's only USB 2.0, and it really doesn't perform all that well on these XI sometimes. RPMI, we don't need to set anything there, I don't think. Nope, that's all fine. Uh, USB, high speed, obviously it's only a uh, USB 2.0 machine. Uh, embedded VGA, we're not really using that. ESXi doesn't use graphics at all. Let's see what our configuration is. Yep, the Smart Array is the secondary boot device and our SanDisk SSD is primary. That's all right. In that case, we can just discard and exit and that should boot the server. Newer servers don't do that. Once you exit a ROM utility, it will do a full reboot. This one does not. I didn't actually check the RAM. <laughs> so we'll see what ESXi detects in a little bit. Now we're booting from an SSD, this uh, should be a bit faster process than usual. I'm running ESXi 6.5. I think this is update 1 because I didn't have the proper ISO for update 2, which I'm now really biting myself for, but I'll do the update, I'll upgrade it to 6.2. We see our 32 gigs of memory, so that's good. You see that this is a ProLiant ML150G6 and our Xeon 5540. And uh, yeah, it's booting rather quickly. Trust me, for ESXi this is pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, it's not that quick. But that's just the way it is. So we're going to let this boot, and then we're going to take a look from my PC to see if everything is in order. And then uh, after that is done, we can take a look at the DL380. Alright, we're at the desktop now, so we can take a look at the state of the hypervisor. Mine's at 1.53. Fill in our password. Did I set a different password on this one? I might have done. <laughs> yep, there we go. 6.5 update 1. We can see all 32 gigs of RAM, 10 gigahertz of CPU power. Because that's, of course, uh, 4 times 2.5 gigahertz. In virtualization, you can do that uh, calculation because you're assigning basically a range of megahertz to the virtual machines and not actually a full core just a core's worth of frequency so here's our virtual machine that's running on the data store this is just a test rig that doesn't have anything on it just to make sure that everything is working okay And it says press control alt delete to log on. We can do that. Uh, 
password. And here we go. Basically an empty Windows Server 2008 R2. Processor detected. This machine has 8 gigs of RAM. And uh, yeah, it's working pretty well. So I think that is a win for the ML150G6 in terms of the RAM upgrade. And if we take a look at the storage, here is our test uh, data store, which will be removed once the other two caddies arrive, so we can put all four drives in RAID 10. Uh, we can see that this is located... Uh, it doesn't really show that well. It says local HP disk. This is a logical volume that is stored on the RAID controller. Because if we go to hardware, we can see the RAID controller right here somewhere. There we go. Hewlett Packard Company Smarter AP410. If we wanted to, we could even pass this card through, as well as the integrated graphics, by the way, which is rather funny. We can pass it through to the virtual machines and let them have some fun with it. I have this set up on my uh, micro server just to show real quick. I don't care that it's unsafe. I don't want to set up a bunch of certificates for test servers. So this server is constantly running. Uh, we had a power cut a day and a half ago, so it turned off, sadly. But uh, the configuration on this machine is that we have a pass-through on our LSI controller in this uh, server. This is also a SAS controller and you can see pass-through is active and is being passed through to my FreeNAS machine here. If we take a look at the configuration here you can see that the LSI card is passed through to the virtual machine. It has 4 gigs of RAM and 2 cores and this is basically handling all of the virtual storage on my microserver using an NFS share. I've allocated about 900 gigs of the two terabytes available uh, for virtual machine use and the rest is still for expandability. And uh, yeah, this is also running rather well. I think the main thing holding this server back is the processor which is the uh, AMD Opteron uh, X3421 which is just a 2.1 gigahertz bulldozer based quad core with very low power. And uh, both an actual processing power as well as power output. It's really efficient. That, and so it's, that's pretty good. But uh, that pretty much uh, is the ML150 G6 over with. Now we just need to take another look at the DL380 Generation 7. It's been such a long time since I've used the DL380 and even done anything to it really. It's been a back burner project for so damn long. Just driving around. But yeah, basically when I got the ML150, uh, like I said, I was actually uh, trying to figure out whether that could replace this. Uh, the answer is pretty much no. And uh, yeah, just take a look at all that magnificence. <laughs> it's a really nice machine. It really is. Dual six core Xeons. Zero bytes of RAM, eight 146 gigabyte 15K SAS drives, very fast drives indeed. We'll also be uh, changing a couple of those out. But first, I need to loosen all the connections on the back, which are actually still loose. Whoops. Uh, we need a T10 torque driver. Because this thing is hella tight. There we go. And yes, that is what he said. In case you're wondering. Battery backup. Oh, I didn't actually need to loosen that. You know, sometimes we're going between the uh, generation 6 and the generation 7. 
this is the type of stuff that you can get confused with. Because in a generation 6 you need to undo a couple of extra screws. Before you can remove the baffle. No such case here. Whoops. So now we can remove the drive cages. I actually used to run a video card in here just for test. A uh, Quadro... I uh, don't, don't remember exactly. 430 maybe? Or 410? I, I don't know. 440. It was a, basically a dual uh, GPU card based around the same core as the G4 6600, I think. I could pass that through, but it didn't work properly. And later when I put it in actual system, it turns out the card was actually faulty. <laughs> So yeah, that's the kind of thing that happens sometimes. Oh well, I got that quad over free, so I don't really mind. So in terms of RAM then, in this case we do need to refer to our population guide, which I'm just checking out on the board. There we go. Uh, yeah. Here. So basically, the camera's a bit shaky, sorry about that. Here is the identification diagram, so you can see uh, how your configuration should look like. So, judging by that, the first slot of each channel is the first slot from the top and the bottom of the CPUs. So, that's pretty easy to remember. So we can start opening some slots and putting in some 16 gig DIMMs. According to all that logic. Well, let's zoom back out again. Because there's a lot of RAM to cover. These servers have 18 slots of RAM. Yeah, that's a lot. So we'll be running three channels on each CPU. Okay. I do also have some 2 gigabyte sticks, but I don't have enough to actually populate the rest of it. So that's fine. Alright, now we'll do the big reach around. And that's not giggity at all. That's not fitting properly. God damn it. It's one of those dims that wants to be pushed down on both sides at the same time. I guess that one goes both ways. Alright. Now let's see, and the last one. And then we'll see if it even accepts this configuration. It should. It's a lot of RAM though, a lot of RAM. 96 gigs across six sticks. Get the plate out of the way. Put the baffle back on. And put the drive cages back in. Or the uh, risers, I mean. Give it a good push. So all the slots are aligned. Battery backup slot. And put the lid back on. Which I just oriented the wrong way. There we go. And it sits into place. So then. Changing out the drives. Let's do that as well. Now, right, I'll admit, I only have six drives. <laughs> but yeah, in the front you can see that all drive bays are already populated. So there's not much we can do about that, right? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be pulling these discs out. Again, these are all 15K, 2.5 inch drives. Uh, let's see, as you can see here. 
So yeah. Uh, let's see who made these. I'm trying to look for obvious date codes, but well, I know they're from 2011, but I can't see any manufacturing numbers here. So at least not from a company that I immediately recognize. Also has a weirdly colored PCB compared to some of the others. I think most of the drives I have are Seagates. Still looking for some details here. Can't seem to identify most of these, so that's okay. So we've got two 15Ks here, four, four, four 10Ks there. We're gonna be running this machine in split mode. That's not the official term, I just that's what I call it. We have four 10k drives, four 15k drives. It's about 15, right? Yeah. So yeah, we'll be running both of them in uh, rate five. So you can get the max capacity, it'll have about 500 gigs on each array, which is pretty good. And uh, yeah, I think that's that should be plenty, because this is not really for mass storage, that's what the uh, the ML and the microserver are for. The microserver is carrying two two terabyte drives right now, the WD Reds, so it's for maximum efficiency. And the ML will be rocking 7200 RPM mainline SAS drives, uh, two terabytes each for those for a uh, four terabyte array in RAID 10. This machine will just be for the compute heavy things and will probably be setting up some form of shared storage between the ML and the DL so they can both share their uh, resources. Maybe something like vSAN or something like that, it should be fun to play with. I haven't done that yet, so I think that could be pretty cool but I'll have to wait for the drive cages. Gosh darn it. But yeah, I guess I've been putting off actually booting this machine up because this will sound like a bloody hair dryer. Uh, I'll put it back in place, connect the network connections to it, and then we'll take a look at uh, how she runs and if all the RAM is detected properly. It's honestly not bad. It's already spinning up the drives. I waited for about 10 seconds to see if it was actually going to fully take off or not. Ah, there we go. That's the sign that our RAM configuration is correct. All right. All right, this is our second attempt. I uh, looked at the diagram some, and it turns out that if you indeed want to use one DIM per channel, you need to use the white slots. They're obviously marked, and I missed that, so that's great. <laughs> now this is working, I hope hasn't beeped at me yet so we should be pretty close to actually getting video and we are excellent just the cursor for now and now we should enter the thermal calibration there we go power and thermal calibration in progress all right I think the last time I actually turned this machine on before making this video is about four or five months ago, I want to say. It is pretty quiet though, it's definitely quieter than the ML150, oddly enough. These are very nice servers in, the, in that regard. You can hear it beeping in there, but this time that's alright. 96 gigabytes installed. Dual Xeon X5650. Alright. There we go, mem test. All slots are detected. Great. That's very nice. Uh, I want to go into. Oh fuck, I don't want to go into setup. Actually, I wanted to go into the option ROM messages. Now we'll have to reboot the server again, because we'll need to redo the raid. And I figured that would be fun. 
Oh, there we go. We can still do that anyway and reboot the server afterwards. That's all right. Apparently this one has a gig on it and no logical drives. Yeah. There are no logical drives available. All right. Can we see drives then? Yes, we can. Uh, I'll need to check. I think 5, 6, 7, and 8 are the 10k drives. It doesn't show that here. So we'll take those out. We'll put them in RAID 5. No spares. We'll only use one parity drive. I'll be working on a backup solution very soon that will feature the ML150 once I get the cages in for the caddies. Uh, yeah, that's good. Try to create another drive. Set to rate five. Yep, excellent. So now we have two arrays of drives, all 146 gig each. So we have about 400 gigs for each array. That's pretty good for what I'm be doing on this anyway. All uh, right. Now it sees two logical drives, and I will boot into the BIOS. Because sadly, that's what I pressed. So yeah, I think I'll need to update the BIOS on this at some point because it's running uh, a BIOS from 2013, and it already has a BIOS of 2018 available. Better serial port. Yeah, whatever. Advanced ECC support, that's good. Let's see if all the virtualization tech is on. I haven't used this thing in a long time, so just need to make sure I didn't forget anything. Everything is enabled. Balance power and performance, yep, that's good. I don't think I need to do anything in here. Turbo boost optimized for performance. Yeah, that's good. Let's see. All the PCI devices on the server. ATI ES1000 video controller. Yeah. Yeah, that's really powerful. <coughs> this also has a smarter P410, but this is the integrated version of it. So that's pretty nice. Uh, what I wanted to check is the boot controller. It is now set to boot from the smart array. It should boot from the SD card. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, I'll have to check that off camera. We'll just take a look at the uh, vSphere web client uh, to see if everything is running all right. All right, as we can see, it is now booting ESXi. I decided to just uh, bring up the ILO here so we can see virtual console on the server. Our static IP on this one apparently is 99. So we can go there in Chrome. No, not not 1.15, that's the ILO. Oh right, this is ESXi 6.0 still. Alright. Forgot about that. That means we can do it through the web client this way, which is flash based. And it doesn't actually work. <laughs> Or, uh, what else can we try? Well, we might be able to do it through Internet Exploder. That still has Flash built in, so. Okay, there we go. Yep, 6.0 update 3. 
and 96 gigs of RAM are detected, 32 gigahertz worth of CPU, and no storage. That oof, that uh, apparently still had a machine on it. Sorry about that. <laughs> and it doesn't want to remove itself. Delete this! Fail to unregister. Yeah, because that drive no longer exists, that's why. Okay, so now we need to see if we can see our arrays. The only annoying thing is I can't see which is which in terms of drives. Should have thought about that, maybe. I'm just going to assume the first one is uh, the 15k array. I can always rename the, <laughs> the data stores afterwards. We'll call it that, use the full disk. Okay, let's change configuration. Okay. Uh, devices. Normal degraded. Okay. Uh, let's clear the petition table off of it. Can't do that either. Well then. It's not feeling too happy about these uh, arrays, it seems. Oh well, I'll check that later, I guess. But, uh. It does say that there's free space on it. Okay. So that one worked, but the other one did not, and that's exactly why. Maybe I have a faulty drive, and now it crashed. Great. <laughs> One of those things that sometimes happens with CSXI. It's great. Honestly. It's just browser support, really. So, so there's that. Um, I think this is a good point to call it quits. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. This server extravaganza. Uh, I thank you all for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.